There is no shortage of magic to be had in the Harry Potter universe. Whether it be the schools, the creatures, or the people themselves, the wizarding world brims with wonder. However, even the most mundane aspects of life have a magical root. And when it comes to the actual process of collecting students and allowing them into Hogwarts, there's no exception. While this concept isn't actually explored within the books themselves, there are references to it, such as when Hagrid notes that Harry's name has been down since before he was born. If you've ever wondered how Hogwarts finds students in the first place, even among Muggleborns or Muggle-raised wizards, this video aims to answer that question. Before we continue, I'm Riley and this is Otherworldly Fiction. On this channel, I discuss fantasy books, sharing lore, giving opinions, and posting essays, as well as sharing the occasional writing advice. If any of this sounds like your cup of butter beer, boop that subscribe button. Posts are on Fridays. What we are discussing is the Quill of Acceptance and the Book of Admittance, two tools used in tandem by Hogwarts to determine who should be attending their school. It might sound elitist, but these tools exist for a good reason. They help wizards to locate those who might otherwise be missed, such as Muggleborns like Hermione, choosing those who aren't necessarily being observed by the magical community. Those who wouldn't be able to attend Hogwarts are also filtered out. Any squibs or muggles living among wizards, for example, won't be mistaken for having talents they don't. By the same token, those like Neville, who are late bloomers in their magic, will also be detected. Finally, if any witch or wizard is placed in a situation where they might be intentionally kept ignorant, such as in the case of Harry with the Dursleys, his name being recorded ensures an owl, or several, will be sent to inform him of what he is and where he's supposed to go. And looking at why the tools are useful, we next need to look at what they are. They are literally an old book, the Book of Admittance, and a quill, the Quill of Acceptance, which sit beside one another. Sitting in an isolated tower on the Hogwarts grounds, they are not seen by students. While headmasters or headmistresses can visit the room, nobody touches the book or the quill. The only people who ever handled the book and the quill were the four founders, who placed them there after the school was created. Those teaching at Hogwarts don't fully understand how the quill and book work, but as it saves them a great deal of work, they don't question the process. Both of the objects are made from magical beasts. The quill, most believe, is taken from a magical beast known as an augury. Moreover, it produces a silvery ink. However, the silver pot it's housed in is empty, and augury feathers actually resist ink. As such, no one has been able to determine what the substance is. As for the book, its pages are sandwiched between covers fashioned from dragonhide. It's not mentioned how the book avoids running out of space. This is only my conjecture, but it's likely the book would function as Riddle's diary did, adding words and then erasing them. It's possible a student's name stays in the book until he or she graduates, or disappears after his or her admittance. Whatever the case, centuries of student omissions haven't seemed to fill its pages, and as there seems to be no danger of this occurring in the future, such a process is likely at work. As for how the quill and book actually work, it's simple. No one is needed to write the names down because the quill levitates of its own accord and settles by the book to write. Both objects move, and some might say think, on their own. Of course, the tools don't always work perfectly with one another. When Hagrid notes that Harry's name has been down since he was born, this is actually an important distinction because that's not the case for every witch and wizard. In fact, some names aren't immediately recorded. The quill writes down names at the faintest hint of magic. However, the book is more discerning. If it disagrees with the quill, it will snap itself shut, thereby preventing the quill from recording the name in question. This doesn't mean that person is barred out indefinitely. 
Instead, the book essentially puts the individual on trial, waiting for them to prove themselves magical. Neville's was one name which was at first rejected by the book. When the quill went to write his name, the book closed itself. Fortunately, Neville showed signs of magic when he was eight, and the book relented. This process, while picky, has kept squibs from attending Hogwarts. While this might sound discriminatory, it's important to understand that squibs would struggle at Hogwarts. The opposite of Muggleborns, they can't cast spells or use magic. Though they're born to magical parents, they are, for all intents and purposes, muggles. Therefore, they would not be able to participate in classes. They'd only feel more out of place, as is seen with characters like Filch. Though squibs can and have held jobs in the wizarding community, most are encouraged to live as muggles, taking muggle jobs and integrating into muggle society. The quill might go to write a squib's name, but the book will refuse it. This is because the quill is not at all discerning, attempting to write the name of anyone who exhibits magical energy. While squibs themselves are not magical, they can, in their early years, be surrounded by that magic which has rubbed off their parents. While the quill will pick up on this, it's not able to detect whether or not that magic belongs to the child. Only the book, with some patience, can determine that. All in all, no one has questioned the process because it is foolproof. Squibs are kept from years of frustration and embarrassment through accidental admission and Muggleborns, who would otherwise fly under the radar, are given the opportunity to integrate into wizarding society. No student whose name hasn't been recorded in the book is allowed or invited to attend the school. If parents have complaints, the Quill of Acceptance and the Book of Admittance also give teachers a convenient excuse. They can eschew any responsibility by directing a parent to take fault with the process instead. As an aside, there may have been an occasion where the system wasn't perfect. A Harry Potter video game is currently in development, and the synopsis is unusual, mainly because the protagonist, though a Hogwarts student, doesn't get admitted until they are old enough to be in their fifth year. In other words, said student didn't exhibit enough signs of magic to be accepted by the book until they were 15. While it's not perfect, at least the book will admit one eventually, provided they prove themselves magical. Whether an hour old, eight years old, or even 15, the quill in the book will assure every wizard has the chance to attend Hogwarts, however long that may take. I'm a sucker for world building, and when it comes to the independent pieces of writing done by the author, the quill of acceptance and the book of admission are among my favorite additions. It's also worth noting that, while they aren't explained in the stories themselves, they are referenced. Fan reactions to Rowling's editions have been mixed, but I'm more than happy to accept the lore concerning these mysterious tools. What surprised you about the process for admitting students? Was this new information to you? What were your theories for how students were chosen? And what questions do you still have? Share them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and happy reading.